Hello, Empress Justice here with the full moon reading of Migashira for nine, the 19th of December 2021. The sun is in Mula, gang gang, Mula moon over here. Um, I had to do some research on exactly what these placements meant, you know, as always, but it, it just occurred to me how scarily accurate this was. Now, it's coming up to Christmas time. And normally this is the time when people are steady, when people are stable, when they choose to remain in one place. But there is chaos around us. I know it is in my life. I recently put in a bid to move. Um, I didn't put in a bid to move somewhere else. Like I, I didn't ask the council for help. I just said I want to leave. But there is something deeper going on than just the loss of possessions. Because it seems that those with more the most are more dissatisfied than most. But before we go into that, let's look at the planets individually, okay? So first of all, we've got the full moon in Rigashira, which means that not only are we seeking um, truth beyond the illusions, which means in some cases we have to unlearn everything. Not only are we looking for truth beyond the illusions, but what we find out is a catalyst to something bigger in 2022. The shit that we find out as a result of the full moon, because remember, the full moon is yin. We don't have to do that much. The truth about, you know, the illusions that we have been subjected to, they come right to us. And those, those breaking of illusions means we have to unlearn everything and kind of relearn everything again. That's A. B, it's a catalyst to what sets off 2020. Now, what I predict for 2020, just based on the full moon in Rigashira alone, which is in Gemini and Rigashira, what I get from that alone is that uh, people are going to be willing to die for their freedom. We're in a whole different ball game now. People are getting fed up of the same stuff that they, you know, they keep being, that keeps being regurgitated to them. 2022 is going to bring, uh, going to bring a reinforcement of distrust of illusion, the distrust of the Garden of Eden, the distrust of, you know, God's plan. Because having eaten the fruit, the tree of the fruit of knowledge, having eaten that, now we're starting to see things as they are and once that happens there's no going back so i feel like people discover something not necessarily catastroph catastrophic or earth shattering but something vitally important that kicks off a whole global trend from 2022 I feel like a war is coming, I'm not going to lie. And we have to be prepared for that. And it might not be the type of war that's just like fucking, you know, spears and swords and guns or even electronic weaponry. But it's a war of the mind. And whilst there are people with more funding than others, there's no guarantee that just because you have more funding that you're automatically going to win. You're not going to win if you don't have the truth on your side. With the full moon in Rigashira, it is going to illuminate the truth about everything. And because it's in Rigashira, we're going to have a very subjective reaction to it, which means just because the truth comes out, it doesn't automatically mean that people are going to get right with the reality and suddenly it's going to click and suddenly they're just going to stop being stupid. The truth brings out different things in different people. The truth might be universal and the truth might have no sides, but human beings are different, okay? Just because the truth comes out, it doesn't mean that we're going to respond the way one ought to or the, one, or the way we think that one another ought to. But it is going to start off a catalyst of a new world. Now, we all, I already prophesied that from the time that I saw Uranus was in Aries, in, in Barani, okay? I already prophesied that from the time that I saw uh, Uranus was in Aries. 
but this full moon it reinforces that we are looking for new pastures we're walking away from the garden of eden we're walking away from illusion into what we don't know but what we do know is that we're going to be walking away from one eden into a new one and the new one might be hell but it's the truth Do we stay in Eden? Do we stay in our current Eden? And have everything, you know, have everything around us be that comfort that we're used to? Do we stay in Eden? Or do we find another Eden or maybe even make our own? Some of us, when we see the truth that Mirgashira full moon brings, We might decide to stay in the Eden that we know. Some of us might decide to find another Eden. So yeah, scary stuff. But it's real. Now we've got the sun in Moolah, of course. (laughs) Keeping right on theme. We've got the sun in Moolah and the sun in Vishaka. Um, It follows on from that theme of just because you have more it doesn't mean that you're going to win right now where our logic is because it's in Mula, because the sun is in Mula and vishaka in d9 in the d9 chart it's in vishaka because the sun is in Mula, we think we can take the truth and because some of us think we can take the truth we also think that we can kind of prepare for the consequences, not accept the consequences. That, that's not what survival is about. Survival is about knowing the consequences and preparing for them so that you can cushion yourself against the blowback. And again, logically, from a place of reason, we're thinking to ourselves, okay, so, you know, we know the truth. We think we're unbiased, but we're not. We think we're unbiased, but we're not. We're supposed to be unbiased. The sun and moon is there to teach us, look, we can't take this personally. If we see the truth and we see the foundations of the way the world really works, we can't take this personally. We have to prepare for the consequences, which is what Vishaka in the D9 chart is there for. And it's in Libra in the D9 chart. Vishaka in the D9 chart is the sign of, of, you know, having material possessions and material achievement, but knowing how to utilize them in order to prepare for the consequences of knowing what we're not really supposed to know or what we feel we're not supposed to know. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that, but what I'm saying is that we shouldn't take for granted that we automatically know what we're going to do or what we should do. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion going on. So we shouldn't automatically assume that we know what's going to happen. I'm just saying, just be aware. This is a time of heavy truth and heavy revelation. And if you're not prepared for it in your spirit, the material shit ain't going to do anything for you. So let's move on to Mercury. Mercury is in Perva Ashada. So, along with the, the full moon in Rigashira, Mercury in Perva Ashara, which is in Sagittarius, we're still following along that vein of wanting to explore new pastures, wanting to, you know, explore new territory and see what the truth really is. But we're going to run into confusion. We're going to run into confusion because it's that thing again where we're looking for easy answers and the easy answers don't come just because you you know what the truth is it doesn't mean the solutions that come to you are going to be easily yeah yeah it's difficult we're not going to be dumb we're not going to be dumb we might act dumb but we're not going to be dumb up here But what is going to happen is that we're going to look for easy answers for complex situations. And the truth of the matter is that they're not going to come. I want to say that we have to use our instincts, but 
what this calls for, what this occasion calls for is a heavy amount of logic. Heavy, heavy, heavy. And a heavy amount of pragmatism. That's the only way we're going to, you know, navigate what Perva Ashada is calling us to do. Because it's calling us to move on to pastures new based on the what we know about the truth and based on what our integrity is. It's calling us to move on to new pastures based on what we know and what we think we know. Or, rather, it sees the truth as it is. And based on our emotional responses, it wants us to journey into any new territory that our hearts dictate is appropriate when the truth comes out. But it's... it's it's way too complex it's it's just too complicated right now so we've got venus in otra ashara in capi that whole dissatisfaction with luxury dissatisfaction with many of us are gonna feel if i cannot live by my principles and live by the purity and the truth this is where i'm at at the moment we're gonna feel like if i cannot live by the purity of my truth now there are people who are who live austere lives right they don't live austere lives because you know they're noble or anything that's what they're comfortable with because as long as as long as they don't have too much it keeps them on their toes it keeps them alert keeps them grounded right There are certain people that once they have too much, they lose themselves. They become indulgent. Um, I remember uh, the Quietest Revolution talking about this when she was doing a Virgo reading. Yeah. The Virgo problem is a problem that a lot of us have anyway. It's, It's not just the Virgo thing. It's just that with Virgo in either Vedic or Tropic, it's a lot more pronounced. But all of us have that problem. Once we become too comfortable, once we don't, you know, if we want for nothing, then we lose a part of ourselves, don't we? So it's like, when Venus is in Uttara Ashara, and Venus is in Shravana in the D9 chart as well, right? We feel like if we have too much, and if we hold on to too much, It prevents us from doing what we need to do. And like I said, the world is going to be in a war from 2022. And it's going to be a war of souls. And in war, you can't afford to to have too much baggage. It slows you down. So... So, yeah. There are those of us who have... But if that having gets in the way of our principles, we're going to be all too tempted to let it go. All too tempted. But even then, it's not an easy thing to decide. It's not an easy decision to make. It's not an easy thing to do. And really, we shouldn't be hard and fast about it. And I know it's rich coming from me, but we shouldn't be hard and fast about this crap. So we've got Mars and Anurada in Scorpio. Mars and Scorpio in the first place. It means strategy. Mars in Aries is fighting. Mars in Scorpio is war. And the thing with Mars in Anurada, for some people, some people are going to be focused on their self-development. And for those who are focused on their self-development, uh... I'm not going to guarantee that they can't be hurt or nothing can't happen to them. But what I can guarantee is that it will strengthen them. Self-development will absolutely strengthen them. But then there are going to be other people who are jealous, who are obsessive. And that jealousy and obsession, it will drive those people to destruction. It's something that they've really got to be careful with. Something that they cannot afford to happen to them. Focus on your self-development when Mars is in Anurada. Mars is in Anurada. Okay? A lot of people might be brushing up on their fighting skills. 
that might be brushing up on their fighting skills. It, it's it's going to turn into Mad Max sooner, sooner or later. I don't think it's going to happen as quickly as 2022, but the war begins in 2022. And a lot of people are going to be thinking to themselves, well, how can I utilize my traits in, in war, in terms of war? Like, I was, I've, I've been asking myself all these questions, and I'm thinking, like, they, they, that can't make no sense. Then I look at the placements. It is no joke. Yeah. Yeah. So this Christmas mild amount of chaos and it's a microcosm of what's going to happen for 2022 and 2022 is going to be a microcosm for what happens for the rest of the decade oh this is scary this is a scary reading <laughs> um god damn um okay so better look at the cards Sorry, guys. All right, so we've got the Knight of Chalices. We've got the Five of Coins. And we have the Six of Knives. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't think right now because of that fucking reading. Um, I'm going to have to look at the notes again. So... From what I've written down on the notes, we've got cynicism, new opportunity proves challenging, confused about a move, feeling out of place, friend from the past re-entering your life, losing possessions, little work satisfaction, wanting more independence and freedom and less responsibility. So it basically backs up everything that I was saying with regards to the planets. Alright, so... Arrival, invitations, messenger, new love, marriage proposal, a marriage proposal is here. Sorry, my teeth are really sensitive. I'm so sorry. Um, number five. We have. We have Aigamusha. I think that's his name. And this is a demon man-eater of the desert, southwestern Africa. In indigence, difficulty, poverty, lack, shortage, desolation. You see, the man's got a, a mouth here. The demon's got a mouth here and his eyes are where his feet are. And then we've got the pentacles here. You see, this is why we're confused. Because when we keep we keep our feet on the ground, it's like we're only looking at what's right in front of us and we're not looking at the wider scope of what's going on. So we're only looking right in front of us and we're not looking at the wider picture. So I'm already seeing what the problem is here. And then the six of knives. So let's have a look at the knives. We want six, don't we? Don't want court cards, we want the other ones. We want the community cards. Six of knives. So yeah, there's a desire to move on to pastures and there. Because we can only see what's right in front of us. We can't see the wider picture of what's going on and the wider picture of... Some of us can. I know, I know that I'm making the decisions what, that I'm making because I'm looking ahead to the future. But some people aren't. Some people are heading onto pastures new because they don't see what's going on. Not because they do. And the, the picture that this collects for me is... Yeah. 
our situation isn't as bad as we think. We're thinking our situation is terrible, but it's not. The problem is us. We don't want to be held back. We know that a lack of protection comes with certain consequences, but we don't care. We don't want to be held back anymore. We don't want to be held back from being who we are. And we feel like the more we accumulate in our lives is the more we're held back from our full potential. It's like that thing of, like for instance, I'm living in a flat, but if I don't take it, it's like the mindset is this, if I don't take the risk of being on the street, then I will never know what I'm truly made of and how I can truly utilize my skills in order to get what I want on my terms. That's the mindset that most of us have here. But hold on, there's more truth to come. Before we move on, there's more truth to come. There's more truth to come. So prepare for new pastures because they're coming. And those new pastures, they're not going to be as stressful as they could be if we act hastily. I feel like this is for me as well. But there's more truth to come. That The truth is why we're staying. It's not the luxury. It's not the luxury. It's not the trappings. It's not nothing like that. It's the truth. That's what we're staying for. That's what we're staying for. It's got nothing to do with, you know, being trapped by other people's crap. And I know it's very, very easy to think that, but it's like, no, no. We just don't want to be trapped by other people's shit. And, And I get it, but there's more truth to come. And there are those of you who are going to know exactly what to do with that truth. That this is an opportunity you can't afford to pass up. You can't afford to you can't afford to pass that. You cannot afford to pass this up. There's more truth on the way. More truth that will benefit you in the long run. Do not be hasty. Don't be hasty. Yeah. Boy, this is a lot. Well, at least it's not depressing and horrible and, you know, it's powerful though. Alright, so, seeing as the full moon is in Gemini for the 19th of December, we're going to start with Gemini, yeah? So we've got the Three of Swords for Gemini, we've got the Fool card, and we've got the Eight of Sticks. So, from what I can see... Huh? Um, it's a tricky time for gems, I'm not going to lie. So this is for Mrigashira, Ardra, and... Where well, I call it there? Punavasu. Alright. Okay, let me just see here, swords. Distance, dispersion, pain, separation, dejection. Okay, Gemini. I'm already getting something, but let me read the rest of the notes. The fool, soul, yes. Instinct, curiosity, rebellion, freedom from preconceived ideas. We see we're still going here. But then again, the full moon is in your sign, so this is to be expected. Simplicity, childlike sentiments, confusion, irresponsibility. So I'm sensing a theme. Here, Gemini, sensing a theme with you. I'm I'm speeding through this as quickly as possible. Bear with. Yeah, so what I'm getting here is heartache is making you do reckless shit. And because you're Gemini's, you will find smart ways to make that work for you instead of making it work against you. But 
you really need to think to yourself is this really what you want gem gems is this really what you want i don't think it is i think it's easy to make decisions from the place of being heartbroken and and hurt but there's happiness on the way for you just give yourself a chance like screw everyone else just give yourself a chance sorry that that's um that's emf interference um causing problems with but yeah it's just you're going through a lot gemini um and that with the full moon in your sign i just want to caution you gemini against pushing too hard for anything because with the full moon already in your sign if you need pastures new it will come to you you just sit tight you don't have to do anything you don't have to do anything like you can just sit tight let it come to you the moon will provide just let it come to you gemini because your vulnerability has been attacked you don't want revenge but you know you can't let that stand and yeah you know you can't let that stand you know and you're right but there's a specific way to do it yeah so gem gems you are going through the most right now and the moon is in the first house of your sign and the sun is in the seventh but mercury is there as well so the sun and mercury are in the seventh part of your sign venus is in the eighth and mars is in the sixth so what i'm seeing for you primarily when it comes to your relationships i feel that letting other people help you or letting other people provide you with some comfort or some safety or some advice i feel like that's the best thing for you gemini at this moment i don't think it's best for you to handle anything by yourself because you know you don't need to like it's like when the full moon comes the reason why people act crazy like i said before is because they're they're basically striving to do what is already about to come to them so yeah i wouldn't advise you do anything gemini by yourself just have somebody else do it with you when it comes to the mars in your sixth house i don't see any problems for your health i don't see anything really bad going on there but i do see that there are open enemies and I do see that they're very jealous and they're very spiteful and they're very obsessive. But the fact that you can see them and you can see them come in, um, it means that other people can see them come in too. And that's why I say like, wait for other people to be on your side because they'll see that coming. They'll see these jealous, stupid people and they'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe you had to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, it will all come out. It will all come out, Gemini, in your favor. So, yeah. What else can I see for Gem Gems? No, I think that's it. So, that's the reading for Gemini. That was for Mrigashira, Ardra, and Pranavasu. Thank you, Gem Gems. I love you. Hang in there, okay? Hang in there, Gem Gems. Leo. Oh shit. Nope. <laughs> Leo. So this is for Maga. Um Maga Parva Falguni and Uttara Falguni. Now this is already looking good, Leo. Um so I see the six of chalices, I see the seven of pentacles, and I see the nine of baskets. So let's have a look at the notes. So I'm gonna have a look at the notes briefly. All right. So, past sincerity, 
gifts, childhood, honesty. Okay, Tano, God of Healing, Ghana, and Henry Osain, Flipper. Is this it? Is this really it? Yes, it is. Commitment, self-criticism, objective evaluation of one's own work, partial gains, importance of being able to wait, dedication. And then we've got nine of baskets here. Baskets. Okay. I think that you're on the road to happiness, Leo. I can't believe I'm about to say this. Um... Leo, it feels very much like a darkest, the night is darkest before the dawn type of thing. And I feel like you're coming out of this period of that darkness, right? Like you're slowly coming out of it. I think be patient. You're Like Gemini has the same thing, but Gemini is heartbroken and dark. And But you, Leo... You're having a good time. You're going to have a good time. I think happy memories of the past will come back. But I think it's more than that. Leo, it looks like to me that you've done some serious work on yourself. And it looks to me like you've done some serious work on your relationships too. But let's have a look at where the planets rest. So your full moon is in the 11th. Oh shit, yeah, that's why this yeah so the full moon is in your 11th house rewards are coming leo rewards are coming for your hard work and you you don't have to go out looking for them and then the sun and mercury is in your fifth happy times are ahead for you and then you've got your venus in the sixth house venus in the sixth house and then you've got mars in your fourth um your home life is not great there's lots of upheaval in your home life, Leo. Um, it's not going to lead anywhere terrible, but like I said, there's a war coming in 2022. So basically, you're preparing your home life for 2022 and what it brings, you know, and that's okay. The fact that Venus is in your sixth house, your health is looking good. Your health is looking good. And open enemies there are no real obstacles or enemies that i can see for you leo i feel like they'll make themselves scarce honestly and anyone who doesn't might make things worse for themselves and the irony is, is that you won't actually do anything it's just that you know they'll make things worse for themselves if they don't leave you alone so i feel like you'll be happy You'll be kind of doing what you need to do, waiting for something else to happen because there's more in the way, right? But I feel like anybody who doesn't leave you alone, Leo, anybody who continues to try to cause problems for you are going to come a cropper. And the irony is, is that normally Leos are very straightforward when it comes to, you know, MAGA especially can be passive, but I feel like Leos are the type of people who are a start, don't start none, don't be none, don't start none, and there won't be none type of sign, that's the type of sign Leo is, but the truth of the matter is, is that if people start with you, then they will be dealt with by external forces, they're not going to be dealt with by you, do you understand what I'm saying, spirit will deal with them, if they keep messing with you, spirit is going to deal with them, so I really don't see that like open enemies are going to be a problem i see that I, I see the opposite if i'm honest with you i think even though venus is supposed to be 
you know, because the sixth house is associated with Virgo, and Virgo is Venus in full, but when Virgo, when Venus is in Virgo, I feel like we get an understanding of what it takes to have that sort of, like, relationship perfection, or that sort of, you know, physical perfection, it starts with healthiness and understanding your obstacles, and preparing to move them out of your way, that's what it takes, and I feel that because they're there, and because you have that wisdom, that it's, yeah, it's not going to affect you, if people come after you, it's just, yeah, yeah, then, they, yeah, they need to back off, Leo, because it's not going to work, it's not going to go well if they don't, they need to back off, so, anyway, that was for Leo, that was for Maga, Perva Falguni, and Uttara Falguni, thank you, Leo, love you, Virgo. So this is for Uttara Falguni, Hasta, and Chitra. Let's have a look at you guys. Alright, so we've got Safe pentacles yeah we've got the king of pentacles here we've got business master power saving result Ooh. let's see what happens for you virgo and then we've got high priestess for you from the african-american tarot the high priestess reason language light wisdom intuition empathy and receptiveness the feminine cosmic principle guide of dreams shadow flight from reality falseness instabilities instability difficulties with the feminine side and then we've got john horse which makes the emperor and the hoodoo tarot so i'm gonna look at the notes for that What I saw from that there, when it comes to this, is what my, <laughs> is what my granny, uh, you know, is what my great grandmother apparently told my grandmother when my grandmother came home from being fought. Apparently, my great grandmother said to her learn if you fight sorry for the terrible accent learn if you fight is what she said i feel like virgos you're gonna be in a very very powerful position of control here i feel that when it comes to anything financial or domestic or anything you are in in, in an incredibly powerful position um it's at this point where you really thought you were going to lose everything that that the opposite happens i can't but i can't even believe this it's like it, it's like making leverage out of your own supposed losses is something that only you can do. I don't I don't know how you guys do it, but you manage to especially with Mars dominant Virgos. You have this talent of taking a loss or a loss of yours and turning it into something that you can use to your advantage. But let's have a look here. When it comes to your business, you're very determined that you're going to do it. Nothing is going to dissuade you from it. I feel like you're going to be successful in that business because of that determination. When it comes to this, it seems like you're not really doing anything, but there's a lot going on internally behind the scenes that people don't see. And because of that internal stuff going on, it gives you this outer layer of authority that people don't understand where it comes from. 
but if people knew how active you were in your private life and you know and how you got here they wouldn't understand that you actually worked very very hard to get to where you are now to be in this position of power okay it's not something that just came to you and landed in your lap it's not the lucky it's not the lucky you know occurrence of a prima donna like this authority and this power that you have is hard fought and hard won okay now let me see where the planets are so the full moon is in the 10th part of your house which goes back to the authority that i was talking about you don't have to do much to get people to respect you all you have to do is just communicate what you want and people will listen with venus and merc with so, sorry with sun and mercury in your fourth house you do want to move on to pastures new but you won't just yet and the reason why you won't just yet is because you're making the decision of what comes first your ego or business you choose business so that comes first and because that comes first um you're not about to do anything reckless that you know is going to jeopardize that have a word with gem will you have a word with gem because that you know they're feeling it right now but have a nice word with gem virgo they don't need your cutting remarks right now um but yeah you are in a much you like of the mercurial signs you're in a much more stable grounded like i know myself type of position and because you're in that position you are yeah your, your business comes first always so that is that is why you're going to just observe sit back observe you're going to watch you're going to wait you're not going to allow anybody to tell you what's going on you're going to do what you have to do according to what your professional interests are and your your venus is in your fifth house because of course it is and then your mercury is in your third house because of course it is and combining those two together oh yeah making connections making business connections that's what's behind this that's why you're so steady and you're so rational and you're so pragmatic and you're thinking of the bigger picture that like unlike so many other signs during the full moon for the next 30 days you're literally thinking about the bigger picture you're thinking about your connections you're thinking about business and because of that you're making really really good decisions you're even willing to swallow your pride in the, in you know for the purpose of business you're even willing to swallow your pride like and you know it's a it's a good position to start from like this this sort of self assurance and this power and this authority that comes from your knowledge and like i said before with the 10th with the, your your moon at the 10th house your star is growing too without you having to do anything I think I think yeah like things are looking good for the Virgos but it's not going to be good as in a yay type of way but it's steady it's strong there's a foundation being built and you're building it and that takes priority over everything right now So yeah that's for Virgo that was for uh Uttara Falguni Hasta and Chitra thank you Virgs there's my voice already it's been a rough few days it's been a rough weekend all right so now we come to aries we've got the oh fuck okay we've got the death card for aries we've got six of pentacles uh that's afro-brazilian afro-american and then we've got railroad bill i'm sorry i i I don't like this series i'm not gonna lie to you um don't like this at all 
Um, normally the death card doesn't really scare me that much but Egon spirit of the dead representing spirit of the dead is transformation sudden change end six of pentacles for the African American tarot Sorry, sorry, Aries, just bear with me. In Guy and Knight Tittlecop and Harriet Tubman. Generosity, donation, gift giving, fair distribution, wise gifts, munificence, charity. All right, cool. And then we've got Railroad Bell. yeah so yeah I'm, lo I'm looking at this I'm looking at this right now and oh I hate this Aries okay so when I saw the death card I immediately got this this feeling Christmas might tell a tale Aries oh no god I'm sorry, Aries. Christmas might tell a tale. You might suffer a huge loss. Maybe in the family. Maybe among your friendships. Maybe. I, I shouldn't say this because th th there's a certain responsibility that comes with saying something so serious. But there might be a loss of some kind. It might not be physical. It might be emotional. It might be a breakup. It might be trauma. But I got something more serious than that just prepare for it don't don't fight what comes because again this reading is just for one particular timeline there are multiple but the one that i'm on right now for aries i'm seeing not tragedy but sadness loss um there will be some financial financial comfort out of that but it might be a small consolation I'm really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Um, oh, God. Okay. So it might be a small consolation, Aries. Um, for the loss that, you know, you, you know, for the loss of something important, there might be some financial help as well. But I think anger, it might make you angry because you've lost someone important, either to a breakup or to the inevitable. It might make you angry, it might make you domineering. Like, take a step back from taking control of anything. If this happens, if this happens the way it happens, let other people take the reins. Like, don't, don't do anything yourself because then you're just going to end up burning out and spiraling out of control like you just need to take a break you're good at taking care of like if if it's the areas that i'm thinking of you're good at taking care of the everyday getting people organized but when the bigger shit comes you need the more laid back ones to take over because when bigger shit comes they're the ones that are going that are usually going to be able to deal with it right so i think don't do anything for now. Christmas might tell a tale. If it doesn't, fantastic. Then the only thing that you need, need like take into account is that things are going to change. Think there are going to be big changes happening. And once again, you have the financial help to deal with that. And all you need to do is remain determined in seeing that change through. Yeah. Now your full moon is in your third house so this is in the house of siblings your siblings are going to be around you um your immediate community are going to be around you which is good your sun and mercury are going to be in your ninth house of belief of long distance travel you may if if the relative is from another country you may take them home um just just 
hold off on anything for now until you know for sure. Um, Venus is in your 10th house. So, again, a lot of things are falling to you in order to, you know, to get things organized and stuff like that. But, like, try to pull back. Even if Venus is in your 10th house, just pull back. You've got Mars in your 8th house. So whatever pain that you feel from the loss or whatever whatever you feel from the change you're going to feel it acutely so it's very very important that you give yourself a break to gather your bearings first let other people take care of some of the details and then when the time's right you can step back in again but yeah this is a lot Aries this is a lot for you to deal with you're a strong sign you know I, I gotta hand it to you you're a very strong sign you endure a hell of a lot but not everything is meant to be endured by one person give yourself a chance Aries all right I'm sorry that that was your reading um that was for Ashvini Barani and Kritika I am so sorry Aries I love you guys you take care All right, Taurus, this is for Kritika, Rohini, and Mrigashira. All right, so we've got the nine of wands for you. I've got nine of wands for you from the Afro-Brazilian, which is weight, pause, delay, defense, aggression. But we've got the ten of pentacles in the african-american tarot now what's this saying immediately i get hope i get hope for taurians which is nice ombrili ancestral protecting spirits gabon and martin luther king is this for ten ten of pentacles yeah it is Family, harmony, health, well-being, family, incomes, agreement, inheritance. I have to wonder why Martin Luther King is here. Martin Luther King, isn't it Martin Luther King Jr.? I have to wonder why he's here though. Why he's associated with this. Maybe because he talked about financial equality among the masses and maybe you talked about social economics i want to turn this on because it's cold as shit all right maybe it's to do with fairness maybe it's to do with fairness taurus that might be what it is there might be more fairness in the acquisitions of possessions or, or like a more it, it might be that your business has something to do with social justice or not communism but redressing the balance or basically redressing social inequality through the business that you're doing it could be about that um, nine which is Dr. Grant that's the hermit card so it might be a plan that's um, not reached fruition yet. You're still in the idea stages. Be in the world, not of it, yeah. I get that. You're in business, Taurus. You're in business. But you're not playing the game by the same rules as everyone else. And I think that when it comes to you trying to create something that actually means something to you, I think that's important. I think it's important to know the game and not play it. You're focused on something that ultimately brings fairness to people, that ultimately feeds everyone. That's what you're interested in right now. You're not interested in gain for its own sake. The moon is in your second house, which means things will... De yeah, uh, I see that finance will come to you more easily than normal. Christmas is coming up, so Christmas is looking good for Tureens. Um, 
your sun and mercury are in your eighth house and ordinarily you'd hate that but no no you don't hate that at all in fact this spotlight on your eighth house and this spotlight on your psychological defense mechanism it gives you greater clarity as to what you can see for the long-term future and because you have that clarity it puts you more at ease Venus Venus is in your fifth no it's not in your fifth it's in your ninth what am I talking about yeah Combine the Sun and Mercury in Sagittarius in your 8th house and then Venus in your ninth. Fucking hell. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's a Taurian in my mind right now that I'm thinking of. It's not just them, but like it's a lot of Vedic Taurians. You might be moving again. So you've only just come into this really far-flung place and now you're going to have to move to another far-flung place. Oh my gosh. Tiring. But it's good. This is the price you pay for standing by your principles when it comes to business. That's the price you pay, Taurus. You know, you're not going to complain about it because that's just not your way. So instead... You're going to take that and use that as an opportunity to rebuild and to become bigger and better than you were before. So, yeah, you're not complaining. You don't care. As far as you're concerned, this is an opportunity for you to grow and for you to become even bigger, badder and, and you know, and do even more good for people than you have been doing. So, yeah, this, if there's a move and there's a far flung move going on doesn't bother you really doesn't bother you you've got mars in your seventh house which means you may not be all that you know you may not be all that pleased to have other people helping you with it but there's going to be aggressive helping i feel like there are people who be really believe in what you're doing so because those people really believe in what you're doing you know they're going to help you in ways that yeah they're going to be aggressively helpful. They're going to be like, whatever you need, I'm here for you. Whatever you need. Because Taurus, your heart is in the right place and there are people who believe in your vision. So let those people help you because, and let me tell you something, once they help you, listen, man. Listen. Once they help you, all bets are off. Okay, once they help you, game over, game over, and you win. Okay, so let these people help you because they believe in you. But I see a lot of good things with Taurus. I see a huge move again. I see your business is still in its idea stages, but when you make the next move, that business is going to come out of the idea stages and it's going to come into the development stage. And when that happens, you will have people on your side who aggressively believe in what you're doing. And they're all too willing to help you. So hang tight, Taurus. I know you will. I know you I know I know how you are. You're accepting, you're calm, you got this. So that was for um that was for Taurus, that was for Kritika, Mrigashira, and hold on. That was for Kritika. Rohini and Mrigashira. And now we come to Sage. The Honey Sages. <laughs> That's so terrible. Oh, I love it. Okay. Alright, so... The world, Oromila, an Orisha that represents the four elements, air, water, earth, fire. And we've got success, love, completeness. Oh, Sag. Oh, Sag. Oh, <laughs> Sag. Oh, mate. I love it for you already. Okay. 
So we've got number four, African American Tarot. I love it for you already, Saj. What are you saying? Imana, God who possesses all things, Rwanda, and Granville Woods. Accumulation, savings, thrift, greed, selfishness, stinginess. I don't see you being stingy, but I do see you being like properly careful with what you've created and what you, what you've manifested so far. I, I see you being very very careful with it, Saj. So let's see. Strength. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Colossians, Colossians chapter 1 verse 11. Tayana, if you've got chap, Coloss, Colossians chapter 1 verse 11, then why is strength not the 11th card? I feel like that's a really missed opportunity there, but okay. Um, all right so yeah there's this real emphasis on luring people with honey rather than vinegar right and I feel that there are occasions, Sage, where you could definitely use with softening up, I think, with the sun and Mercury in the first house of your sign. Um, being assertive and being bold is definitely encouraged, but it doesn't mean you have to be overly aggressive. You can, like, you can use honey instead of vinegar. You can get what you want, and what you want is more likely to be, like, a smart decision on your part anyway, but I feel like just take it easy a little bit, Sag. I feel like you have the right to be angry. You have the if there if there are anything that that's gone wrong lately, you have the right to be angry. You have the right to, be, to like to tell everybody to just f off. You have that right, but it's like just because you have the right, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to benefit you. And you, Sagittarius, have to come first. I think things are looking good in terms of what you've done so far the work that you've done so far has been brilliant i feel like business wise you've really cut you know turned a corner with your finances you've turned a corner as well and you've become a lot more prudent you've become so savvy with your finances and i feel that the decisions that you make now is going to pay off dearly in the long run pay off big time Sagittarius I feel like some of you might uh, uh, might be millionaires like in a few years to come that's how big it is but with this now you being so dynamic and so intelligent with your money and with your resources it might make you a little bit arrogant I'm not gonna lie it might make you kind of arrogant and I know I'm a mula moon right Sag moon you know, we're arrogant, but not in the same way that Leo is, like, I'm the fucking best, and, you know, I need to shine my light at all times, not that type of arrogance, but it's the type of arrogance that thinks we know better than everyone, even when we're not always right, uh, and I'm not gonna lie to you, like, if you're, if you're a Mula Moon, you're, you're probably right most of the time, I mean, I'm just saying, you're probably right most of the time, but you need to persuade people to do what you want them to do. And that only works if you give them something and if you make them feel like their contrib contributions to anything or anyone is worth something. You're only going to make them feel that if you're nice about it. So, you do know a lot. You're very truthful. You're very honest. 
you're willing to back up everything that you say I love you for that Serge but tone it down a little you have so much going for you and I do get the feeling that no matter how you treat people this is assured anyway this is assured because you know you know how to use things to your maximum advantage you're an amplifier so you you know how to use things to your maximum advantage so i get the feeling that you being arrogant is not going to get in the way of that you, you even you can't get in the way of you and i feel i really feel that even you can't get in the way of your own success at this point Saj. i feel like it's pretty much written in stone your success is written there's, there's nothing and no one that can take it away from you at this point and I know it sounds, again, it sounds arrogant. I'm a Sag, right? But I'm not saying that because you're just some magical, wonderful being that can do no wrong. I'm saying that, Sag, because I, I know you. And whatever situation you find yourself in, you're going to use that to your advantage. I know you. I know you're going to do that. So even you, in the end, even you won't get in the way of yourself. Even you won't get in the way of you. You won't let that happen. <laughs> so, the only thing that I can suggest, soften your stance a bit, and that's all you need to do. Just soften your stance. You're fine. You're fine. You got this. Because you've made really smart choices up to now. You're, you're going to be all right. You're going to be absolutely all right, and I never thought I'd say that, but you are. So that was for Saj, that was for Mula, Parva Ashara, and Uttara Ashara. Saj. Alright, so. One of swords. Ace of swords. One of swords. My brain's fucking. Anyway, long story short. That's the chariot card. Oh, let's see what's saying. For, let's see what Cappy is saying now. I'm intrigued already. Uh, it, looking at these cards already, I'm seeing truth leads to love, real love. That's what I'm seeing. But let me just, let me just. It says Ace card, excess seriousness, determination, intelligence, capacity. Um, hmm. I told you guys, I feel like Cappy. Yeah, I feel like victory is ahead for you. But let's see, let's see what this says from the African American Tarot. The chariot, animals, hunting, grazing. Oya, goddess of storm and change, Nigeria. Light, dynamism, fruitful talents, success and challenge. Search for a social definition. Megalomania, arrogance, imprudence, and impatience. Lack of scruples. I don't think that's you, Cappy. I think you're very powerful. I think you're very strong. But I don't think you have the sage's arrogance. Okay? But let's see. Courting. That's the lover's card. Usually the... the um, it's usually the temptation card to do with walking down two paths it makes me it, make, it puts me in mind of something Woody Harrelson said on SNL with um, Taran Killiam I think that's his name when he was doing an impression of Matthew McConaughey and Woody was there and he said the roads diverge and me and Matthew didn't pick either one okay so So that's what it feels like. Capricorn, your love life is doing well. I feel that the truth only makes it better. <laughs> the irony of all ironies, usually like the truth or secrets coming out or anything like that is usually the death now of somebody's relationship, Cappy, but it is not the case for you. There are truths that come out. There are secrets that come out about one another's past. But instead of actually harming your relationship with the people that truly love you, it only reinforces the strength of their love, your love for one another. 
So the truth of this world and the truth of yourselves, if you didn't feel like you were right for each other before, you definitely feel like you're right for each other now. And that's incredibly, incredibly powerful. And that is not even just romantic relationships. That can be friendships. That can be like soulmate unions. And soulmate unions are not always romantic or sexual. Um, they can be platonic. But I feel that you guys, um, your love is going to conquer all, I feel like. There's another part to this too. For many Cappies, I feel like you have a more defined sense of why you're here and what you're doing here. And that leads you to a love that is actually meant for you. And it's beautiful, it really is. Um, you've, got the star, you've got the moon in your sixth house. Um, you will have to deal with open enemies, but they're so small and petty that you almost don't see them. And like, to say that you don't care is an understatement. And because the love is so strong in your life, it's so strong. But that's what happens when you have a laser light focus to, towards, you know, what exactly what you want to do. It, it leads you to, it leads to people, situations, like getting caught in the laser light and becoming one with it. And that your love life and your friendships and your strengthen as a result of you being dedicated to your purpose. So when these enemies come because of this, this full moon, you're like, and the sun and mercury is in your 12th house so again this is not going to be as a result of your ego in fact there's a distinct humility that comes from your determination that comes from your persistence and that even comes from your dominance you don't dominate from a position of i know better than everybody uh, you're dominating from a position of there are tough choices that need to be made if i'm the one who has to make them cool you've got venus in your first house so of course you're going to attract love and you're not going to have to look for anybody and they're going to come right to you and then you've got your mars in your 11th house which means um yeah there's an aggressive strive towards you getting what's yours and you do get what's yours but you get added rewards on top of that that you weren't expecting capricorn you get you know you you know you're striving for wealth and prestige and but the love that you gain is so much more powerful than that it's like you weren't expecting it you just weren't expecting it but it's come and you're gonna have to live with that sorry cappy you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get used to being cherished <laughs> gonna have to get used to that <laughs> gonna have to get used to being cherished and loved and appreciated sorry about it but that's your life Cappy yeah so but it's it's lovely it's a nice it's a nice reading for Cappy I'm really really happy for you guys I didn't expect this reading for you but yeah the, in your case the truth brings love greater love than you could have ever thought possible people would kill for something like this so that was for capricorns that was for uttara ashada shravana and danishta all right so eight of chalices for the afro brazilian and then we've got the oh the hanged man for the afro american and then we've got grandchildren so you have faith this is for aquarius this is for um this is for danishta shatabisha and perva badrapara I immediately see from this you don't know what's going on you have no idea but you have faith 
you have faith you're not worried at all but then your Aquarius of course is different to everyone else so shyness modesty disappointment uncertainty future okay shy you're just patient let me just have a look at this so we've got the hanged man for you guys let me see oh. the hanged man the observer yeah you, you yeah you're just watching everything initiation ritual ifa god of fate and destiny nigeria Light, wisdom, spiritual strength, inner depth, mysticism, self-sacrifice, dedication, shadow, lack of a sense, isolation, stagnant situation, renunciation, frustration. I don't see any of that. I see you just waiting, watching and waiting for something to happen because you know something good is about to happen. And while there's chaos all around you, you are not about to freak out or throw in the towel or anything like that you're just watching and waiting Aquarius to see what's going to happen and this is a this is a card that's associated with your sign anyway so it's looking good um early the next morning Laban kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them then he left and returned home Genesis chapter 31 verse 55 I think you're waiting for a miracle and you know it's going to happen. There's a sense of you just giving up your ego and just seeing what happens. But this is this is a standard this is standard Aquarius behavior. Standard Aquarius behavior is like I'm not going to let my ego dictate what's going on. I'm just going to sit here and wait and watch. And just, I know I'm going to, I know that a progression is going to happen. And I'm not going to make any assumptions about it. I'm just going to watch and wait and see what happens. Now, let me see what more I can get from this. You see, that person's just watching. He's waiting. Younger relatives, watch out for younger relatives. I feel like... There might be a baby on the way. My, a baby might be born. Not necessarily yours, but a baby might be born. Might be very important to your Aquarius. That might be what you're waiting for. If you're an Aquarian father to be, you might be waiting for your wife to give birth to her baby. If you're an Aquarian, Aquarian mother to be, you might be giving birth soon. Or somebody in your family is about to give birth and it might have powerful consequences for you that you didn't expect. But in any case, I feel like when it comes to your domestic situation or your professional life, like you're not freaking out about anything. You know everything's in chaos, but you know there's going to be an end to the chaos at some point. So you're not freaking out. Everybody else is like, why aren't you scared? I'm, and you're like, scared of what? Scared of what? What's the point? So everybody else is freaking out and you're maintaining your composure because you know the better things are on the way. So you're preparing for those better things instead of freaking out and instead of just acting like an idiot, <laughs> like almost everyone else around you seems to be Aquarius. I don't, I don't know what I don't know what they're doing. It just, you know, it's like you know that them freaking out is just going to make things worse, but they're not going to stop freaking out. So it's like you have to prepare for that. And you also have to prepare for the good that you know is coming. But you're okay with it. You're okay with it. The only thing that I would suggest is, is that sometimes a short, sharp, calm the fuck down is what's needed. <laughs> like, I'll be real about that. Sometimes you just got to say, look, listen, calm the fuck 
down. Seriously. Everybody's freaking out and be like, oh, and Aquarius, you've got to step in like that. Seriously. But yes, you are calm, you're collected, you're waiting, you know there's chaos going on, and it's not like you don't care. But look at this. There's a blind man, and he's got all these eyes seeing for him. So it's like he's letting his extrasensory perception take over, just like you're letting your intuition take over. I don't think I have to read much for you, Aquarius, because you seem to have everything in hand at the moment. So yeah, just... Sometimes get a bit firm with people, but other than that, yeah, you're fine. You're fine, Aquarius. So that was for Aquarius. That was for Danishta, Shatabisha, and Purva Bajrapada. Okay, so we've got the moon, we've got the hermit, nine of sticks, cool. So I've got to get that other booklet. Where did I put it? There it is. So for the Afro Brazilian tarot, we have the moon card, and I want to know what Orisha that is. So let's have a look. The moon, Yua, oh, I think it's Yoa, or Oya. Is it Oya? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Oya, yeah. I think it's Oya. Orisha that represents purity and protection of nature, mutability, intuition, emotivity. Okay, Pisces. So let's see for the Afro Brazilian, Afro American, sorry. So we've got the Hermit. These are really beautiful cards, by the way. Witch Doctor, of course. Dang, civilizing God who abandoned mankind in disgust, Sudan. Dang, I feel you, man. I feel you. Light, spiritual retreat, wisdom, austerity, meeting with the master. Shadow, misanthropy, hostility towards life. Lack of compassion, distrust. Okay. And now we've got the nine of sticks. And sis is packing. So let, <laughs> let's <laughs> sis is packing. Let's let's just have a look at this. Okay. Alright, so Putting all this together, what I'm getting is I don't know what I'm getting, Pisces. I feel like um, the I feel like what you've got up against you, Pisces is more than you can deal with I feel that you want to stand your ground get shit done you want to strive towards a certain idea and it's like spirit is throwing you a bone and like throwing in front of you people who will help you out and who will do this and you're like nah, fuck off and I feel that there's a sense of mistrust right now. You don't trust anybody. And I'd like to tell you, Pisces, that you're being paranoid and that like you're overreacting, but you're fucking not. You're not. You're not overreacting. Like, like when you're going through what you're going through, who do you honestly have to pass it to? It, no wonder you're pissed off. Who do you who do you honestly have to pass it to? You're going through the mill right now, health-wise mentally all of that who do you pass the baton to because the people around you seem to either not give a shit or be completely incompetent when they do give a shit it's like in order for you to function you have to accept substandard help and 
unfortunately Pisces that's what you have to do you have to accept people whose help is crap spirits throwing you a bone as much as they can the job that you have to do is like when that help comes it's for you to take advantage and take that piffling help that you get and for you to kind of do something with it so spirit is throwing you a bone in the sense that they're giving you people who will help you but you are ultimately still in control because you know what's best for you you know what's best for you so you ultimately know exactly what you need to do and spirit is giving you the room and the scope to maintain that control that's why spirit is sending such rubbish people to back you up that's why they're doing it that's why they're doing it it's so that you ultimately can maintain control and you don't have to worry about you know other more intelligent people you don't you don't have to worry about intelligent people who don't know you fucking it up because sometimes what happens right is that you may get intelligent people in your corner but those intelligent people don't know you so even though they have the right idea they might end up having the right ideas for the wrong person so these incompetent idiots in your life pisces that are messing everything up making everything worse you know they're making everything worse because what they're there for is to be your tools they're not there to be your assistants they're there to be your tools and with those tools you can overcome any hidden obstacles anything that you know you can see is, a, is going to be a danger to you use the tools there to your advantage and I know it sounds really sociopathic to say but needs must Pisces damn I mean if it means that you end up with better health and better well-being and being in a better position than you are now use them tools use them tools that's what I'm saying all right so that was for Pisces that was for my beautiful Perva Bajrapadas, Uttara Bajrapadas and Ray Vartis. I love you Pisces. Use them tools, bruh. Use them tools. Oh, and before I go. Yeah, before I go, I gotta go into your houses. So the full moon is in your fourth. So there's not much that you have to do domestically. And your um, Sun and Mercury are in your 10th, so that's where you need to be focused. Venus is in your 11th, so there ain't much you need to do there. And Mars is going to be in your 5th, so yeah, that's where this is coming from. Use your tools. I love you, Pisces. Take care. Bye-bye. So... Hang on a sec. There's a card missing for my beautiful Librans. so what I have to do is I've got to do another shuffle for you I don't know how there's a card missing but we're going to do a shuffle for you anyway from this deck so I'm going to turn the camera around lip lips let me see aren't you lucky Libra you get a fresh card let me see I'm covering the mic. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So you guys get a fresh card and I'm going to shuffle for you right now and we're going to see which card we get from you get for you from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot, okay? Mwah. We're going to do this together. Okay.
All right. This is what. All right. This is what you got, Libra. You got the Queen of Pentacles. Okay. Shit, you got. Look at this. Two Queen of Pentacles, Libra. Interesting. All right. So. So, we've got the Queen of Pentacles for Libras. Turn the camera back round. So, we've got the Queen of Pentacles for Libra. And we've got certainty, prodigality, fertility, alliance, confidence. And we've got two of them, baby. Beautiful. All right, so, got... Okay, we've got Queen Allah, Earth Mother, Goddess of Fertility, Nigeria, Opulence, Material Security, Magnificence, Heiress, Hostess. We got two of them. Oof. All right, cool. Cool Libra, cool. Cool Libra, cool. Okay. And now we've got them bones. Them bones, them bones, and dry bones, them bones, them bones. I can't help it. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Wow. Okay, Libra. Um, for other signs, they need to be on the fence. Libra, you're being told to get firmly off the fence. Because what's being assured is that whatever direction you take, whatever direction you decide to go into, abundance is assured. Get off the fence. You don't have to wait. Get off the fence. Whatever decision you decide to make, you know abundance is guaranteed. You are guaranteed to take whatever situation you are in and turn it into something rich, abundant, and 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 ultimately wealthy. You're in a good position either way. I feel like you know, with some with some signs, they have to make one decision or the other. But you don't have to do that, Libra. You don't have to do that. You don't have to make one decision or the other. Like the irony, Libra is usually the um, you know the 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 sign of indecision like or the sign of imbalance learning to balance and learning to make a decision but it's like no you don't have to do any of that all you have to do is just choose according to what your integrity is and your full moon is in your uh the full moon is in your ninth sun and mercury are in your third venus is in your fourth which is great this is exactly what i'm talking about when I say whatever position you'll find yourself in, you're going to be abundant anyway. You know, there's no choice that you won't make that's going to lead to poverty. And your Mars is in your second house. I told you! Aggressive, aggressive abundance building. Aggressive. So there is no decision that you will make that will lead to the poor house in any way. You are set, Libra. So all you have to do is make a choice that is in line with your core principles. That's all you have to do. Because either way, I'm not going to say that big money is coming. That's more for Sag. But when it comes to you, Libra, all you have to do is make a choice that, that goes with your core being. You don't, have to do, you don't have to do anything that's against your principles. You don't. Some other people might have to wait, but not you. Not you. Because what I'm seeing already is that you already know how to use every situation to your advantage. And that's going to happen again. So I feel like, yes, I feel like a lot of Librans, you're onto bigger and better things. Y yeah, you are. You are, I can't lie. I can't lie. You're onto you're into bigger and better things. And 
that's all that's ahead up for you. I'm, I, I, I've got to be honest with you, Libra. That's all that's ahead for you. Bigger and better things. That's what you have to look forward to. That's all you have to look forward to. And yeah, that's going to be a short reading for Libras. All I have to say is just choose according to your in, into the, the depths of your soul and what you really want. And that's all you have to do. You're, you're going to be fine. So yeah, that's that's fantastic, Libra. Um, so that's for Chitra, Sfati, and Vishaka. That was a short reading for Libra. But I appreciate you giving me this insight into you, Libra, because, you know, it's looking, it's looking very, very good uh, for you, Libra. I, I love it. And I wish nothing but the best for you. Yeah, you're going to make it. Not in, I can't even say you're going to make it. You've made it. All you have to do is where you, you know, all you have to decide is where you go next in order to build upon the wealth that you've already generated. Like, that's all you have to decide. Damn. I didn't think it would be that good because there's so many, like, dicey readings. That, like, I didn't, I didn't expect that, but hey, it is what it is, Libra. So that was for Chitra, Sfati, and Vishaka. Thank you, Libra. Okay. We've got the Six of Pentacles for Scorpio. We've got the Eight of Pentacles for Scorpio. And then we've got Gula Jack. I love and hate this card at the same time. I feel like the card is judging me, but at the same time, I love the striking, powerful imagery. But that's just a personal thing that I have about the cards. So let's have a look at the meaning for you guys. Okay. In Guy and the Tiro Cop, the God giver of the flock to the founder of the Maasai tribe in Kenya. Oh no, I'm reading wrong. Sorry. Afro Brazilian, I'm, I need. That's an that's Afro Brazilian. Ambition, gifts, gratification, win, generosity. And here we got we got Gu, God of Tools, Benin and Togo, and Elijah McCoy, Colchester, Ontario, Canada, 1844, Detroit, 1921, where he lived and died, of course. Manual dexterity, craftsmanship, skill, dedication, and commitment. And last but not least, we've got Gula Jack. All right. So what can I get for Scorpio? I feel like you're putting your own needs first, which is good. But you don't feel comfortable with it. There's a discomfort that comes with it. You've got Mars in your first house, which means that you're having to alchemize like really terrible situations that you're in. You've got the full moon in your eighth house, yeah. That falls in line with the Mars in your first because you've got a Mars dominant nakshatra in your eighth. And then you've got Sun and Mercury in second house, yeah. And then you've got Venus in your third. So Venus in your third, I see that here. Sun and Merc in your second house, I see that here. And Mikashira in your eighth, I see here. And Venus in your third, I see here as well. I think I already said that. And you've got first Anurada. You've got Anurada in your first, you've got it here. 
you're feeling really vulnerable, Scorpio, and I, I get it. Um, it's not easy what you're going through at the moment. Uh, I feel like some of you are going through a situation where you're having to do everything entirely by yourself and you don't know exactly how you're going to navigate all this. Um, I think the, the main thing to do, Scorpio, is just to take it day by day. Just take it day by day and don't overthink anything because I think Scorpios are like tied with Virgos in overthinking shit it's just that with virgos it manifests inwardly so we in your well, world i say we i'm a i'm a vedic leo but i'm a tropic virgo so with virgos um virgos over analyze things inwardly but i think where scorpios are concerned they overthink things outwardly and i think that's why scorpios are so touchy it's because what we see is touchiness. It's like we literally see their thought patterns in action, whereas other people normally keep it to themselves. And I think we see a lot of that with you. I think we see like you feel vulnerable. So your mind is going into overdrive and your mind goes into overdrive in real time in front of people rather than hiding it which means you might lash out, you might, but hold on. You're in a comfortable position. You don't need to do that. You're in a comfortable position. You don't need to lash out. You're fine. It's just that you hate feeling vulnerable and you hate feeling raw and exposed like that because when you feel anything other than anger, it feels like you're being exposed to the world, but that's not what's happening. You're surrounded by cushioning. Um, there are people around you who actually do want to help you and do want to sacrifice themselves even to help you. And I don't mean literally, but there are people willing to give their entire selves to help you because they love you that much. But it's like, no, I hate feeling vulnerable. I hate feeling like this. So you lash out at people and it's like, no, babe, no. Scorps. It's okay to be vulnerable. Like, I think what's really going on is that you're giving yourself a hard time for not being a dickhead. Like, why? Why? Why be a dickhead when you can be the real you? Like, yeah, you, like, it's the real you, it's fine. This real you is fine. You don't need to you don't need to be on the defensive all the time. You're comfortable, you're cushioned. Let yourself be helped. Let yourself be helped. It's fine, Scorps. You got this. You're fine. You know? And there are people around you who will not disrespect your vulnerability. There are people around you who will not disrespect your vulnerability, okay? So don't worry about it. Like, just, just be cool. Yeah? So I think that's the reading for Scorpio. But yeah, you've got plenty of money coming in. You're, you're doing okay. You're doing well. Everything's on the up and up. But just watch this. Stop trying to run from your vulnerability. So that was for Scorpio. That was for Vishaka, Anurada, and Jeshla. Thank you, Scorps. I love you. Be vulnerable. It's okay. Spirit's got you. Hello, Cancer. All right, so you, you're another one who's got the death card. I think it means something different for you, though, because for Aries, it meant something just like, yeah. but for you, I think it's something different entirely. Um, I'm going to go into it in a minute, and I'm going to explain what I'm talking about in a minute. So I've got the Five of Swords here. Loss, defeat, infamy, betrayal, failure. That's from the Afro-Brazilian Tarot. Afro-American Tarot, on the other hand, signals death. Transformation, break with the past, new concept of the world. 
profound emotion, renewal of the ego, rejection of the superfluous, stagnation and inertia, fear of facing change. I don't think facing change is something that bothers you, Cancer, but let's have a look. Um, six of baskets. somebody's getting theirs cancer and it is not you thanks <laughs> somebody is about to get theirs cancer oh my god let me tell you something right you have had a hard time as of late like you had a really hot streak like for the last few months you had a bit of a hot streak and Today is where it kind of comes tumbling down, tumbling down. But unlike Aries, when you lose, you gain everything. When you lose, you gain everything. The, 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 seriously, the, the turnaround is crazy. Because here, there's a situation where you feel like you've lost. You haven't lost because this is here what feels like a loss to you because the truth came out and the way it was supposed to work is that the truth would come out and you'd be victorious but your victory the victory that's coming the victory that you had in mind is nothing compared to the victory that's coming because this death right here the death of the old in your life it's making way for new memories that are pleasant that are wonderful that are happy that are joyous death is going to be the making of you i don't know if i'm sorry to say this right and i know it sounds macabre but in hoodoo and you know in any form of craft death is not something that we should fear even if we lose the people that we love it's not something that's that that, that we're supposed to fear Speaking personally, Cancer, when my grandmother passed, when my grandmother passed, um, instead of me feeling like I'd lost something really, like, like really lost something, like, I felt like my life started when she passed away. And I know it sounds like an awful thing to say. But I feel that we are truly meant to take over from our grandparents, not our parents. And I feel that for some of you, when you experience a loss of home or of relatives or of anything, in fact, I don't feel like you're going to experience a loss, actually. I feel like it will be a huge change that reinvigorates you. And, and let, me, let me just... I feel like whatever you lose, it reinvigorates you rather than bringing you down. So it's like you had this really good streak and then suddenly something goes wrong. But instead of going wrong, it turns out to be even better than what you would have had if, if you'd have stayed on that hot streak. You, you couldn't stay on that hot streak because it had to be at some, at some point, something has to be released. There's a creation and a destruction cycle that has to be observed. And I feel like with the destruction of everything around you, you build something new, something wonderful, something pure. I feel like, Cancer, you go through hard times during this full moon, but I think these hard times are going to be the making of you. I think this is going to solidify you as a powerful force to be reckoned with, Cancer. And that's the truth. That's what I see. I don't see you faltering. I don't see you losing. I see an apparent loss, which leads to an actual transformation, which leads to growth and purity and innocence and wonderment. 
cancer you've got hard times coming up and you've been through hard times up to now it started when did it start it started with the last it started with the new moon the crux of these hardships come tumbling down but instead of you losing you win more it's like you become a hundred percent but more than that it's it's weird it's crazy it, you like it feels like when you're going through these times it's like but why am I going through this? I hate this. Why am I going through this? But no. You come back a thousand times stronger. <laughs> and it's like, boy. Yeah. That's all I have to say, Cancer. I feel like you are going to turn a corner. And let me tell you something. You've got the full moon in your 12th house, which means you're about to release gifts onto the world that nobody was prepared for. And then you've got your sun and Mercury in your 6th house, which shines a light on the enemies that feel that they've won over you but haven't. Their defeat is going to be made clear, made even clearer with the Venus in your 7th house. When it comes to love and when it comes to wealth, you have to go out and look for it, yes, but that love and that that wealth that you seek is going to be all too happy to receive you and then with the mars in your fifth my guy that's where this comes from because this is a scorpio card and you've got your mars there in your fifth house this is what you wait for. this is what you long for especially with ashlesha right think about ashlesha that next chapter for a minute right Whenever you see Ashlesha as a nakshatra or anything to do with them, you always see them being liberated through death, right? Liberated, like through either a big death, like an impaling, or a little death, like sex, right? You always see Ashlesha being liberated through death. You are liberated from these losses you incur, incur these apparent losses which are not losses at all. It's respite. And because of that, you feel lighter, you feel easier. This should have been your sword. This should have been. This should have been your swan song, but it's not. It's not at all. It's the opposite. It's your triumphant. It's your triumph. It's your, yeah. This is your triumph. This is your moment. The moment where everything seems to be going wrong, that's the moment where, bang, everything just turns around in your favor again. Jeez. Damn it. I never thought that I'd get such a powerful, powerful reading for you, Cancer. But yeah, that, that's for Cancer. That is for um, Ponavasu, Pusha, and Ashlesha. Cancer, you got this. That's going to be the making of you, that card right there. That's going to be the making of you. You're going to be more powerful than you ever were. And people better watch out. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. I love you guys. Take care. Mwah. Bye, Cancer. Whew. Right. So now we come to the end of the reading. And what we can expect by the next full moon for everybody so what i've got for the notes here is depression fears bad company new internship and learning experience new generosity new charity much generosity so it starts off with this full moon being full of doubt full of chaos and then it's like everything's turned to ash and then there's new greenery popping up out of it, of its own free will. We're witnessing a destruction cycle. We're witnessing the destruction end of a cycle to be made way for a new cycle. That's why there's so much chaos. That's why there's so much going on. There's an old cycle being made way for a new one. It needs to happen. So... I've already read everything for this, so yeah, I feel like there's, when it comes to finance, when it comes to wealth, 
I think for some of us, we'll, we'll actually do really well financially. Like, it's like I said before, it's only when everything burns to the ground that things start to grow anew again, right? But the destruction has to happen. It cannot not happen. But what makes a difference between what we gain from it and what we lose from it, it depends on our attitude and it depends how we handle the situation in accordance with yeah it depends on our attitude it really does depend on our attitude um i think i think greenery there's greenery that pops up out of it but it's like the start of something it's like by the sweat of your brow you shall bake bread type of vibe we've come out of eden we've, we didn't just come out of eden we burned eden to the ground and now we're creating our own we're building our own we're making our own wealth we're making our own way which is it's a small start but it's it's a, a, a worthwhile start for many of us but before that war it's got to happen can't avoid it I missed some houses I believe for Aquarius and Pisces um, if there are any Aquarians or Pisceans in the comments I'd be happy to uh, rectify that by giving you the details of your houses and what that means for you all you got to do is hit me up on YouTube or Instagram and I will happily rectify that for you guys so that's the end of the reading I love you guys take care Empress Justice out. Mwah. Bye bye.